good day and Merry Christmas, everyone. And here is Asian Expert today with me, Vanessa. Thailand Prime Minister attends ceremony for that Thailand's Marines after warship sank. Thai Prime Minister Payul Chan Ocha presided over a ceremony for six dead Marines. The coffins of the six Marines were moved to Satahib, where they were placed in front of the wreaths sent by the Thai royal family. The seamen died after the HTMS Sukhothai sank amid strong waves and winds. The Navy said a military red rescue team is still searching for 23 Marines unaccounted. The US-made corvette was carrying 105 military personnel, many of whom were rescued as or soon after it sank, while others had to abandon ship without life jackets. The United Nations Council adopted its first resolution to demand an end to violence in Myanmar. The United Nations Security Council adopted its first resolution on Myanmar in 74 years to demand an end to violence and urged the military junta to release all political prisoners, including ousted leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Myanmar has been in crisis since the army took power from Suu Kyi's elected government in February last year, detaining her and other officials and responding to pro-democracy protests and dissent with little force. Today, we have adopted the first Security Council resolution on the situation in Myanmar. It is the result of many weeks of careful consultation with council members with ASEAN members and with other key regional partners. In February 2021, the military overturned the results of a democratic election, seized power and plunged Myanmar and its 55 million people into a series of cascading crises, humanitarian, economic and political. The coup has had negative consequences for the region and its stability. Would like to acknowledge here the the 15-member council has long been split on how to deal with the Myanmar crisis, with China and Russia arguing against strong action. They both abstained from the vote along with India. The remaining 12 members voted in favor. China's UN ambassador, Tang Jun said, China had wanted the Security Council to adopt a formal statement on Myanmar, not a resolution. Meanwhile, Russia's UN ambassador, Vasily Nabentsia, said Moscow did not view the situation in Myanmar as a threat to international peace and security and therefore believed it should not be dealt with by the UN Security Council. The adopted resolution expresses deep concern at the ongoing state of emergency imposed by the military when it seized power and its grave impact on the people of Myanmar. It urges concrete and immediate actions to implement a peace plan agreed by the ASEAN and issues a call to uphold democratic institutions and processes and to pursue constructive dialogue and reconciliation in accordance with the will and interest of the people. Heavy rain caused massive flooding in east coast of peninsular Malaysia and displaces thousands of people. Widespread flooding swept across large areas of Kelantan and Terengganu, two states along the east coast of peninsular Malaysia, after days of continuous heavy rain. The aerial footage filmed in an area at Pantai Timur straddling between the two states showed large swaths of the landscape flooded with houses, roads and buildings surrounded by brown water. An official from the State Drainage and Irrigation Department said the intense rainfall in Kelantan hit a record of 627mm, the highest since 1967. Authorities said the deluge has affected over 66,000 people across the states of Terengganu, Kelantan, Pahang, Perak and Johor. According to local media reports, thousands were still housed in relief shelters after being displaced. China will facilitate implementation of United Nations Biodiversity Deal. We are also delighted to have the minister representing the host country, Mr. 
COP15 President and Chinese Minister of Ecology and Environment Huang Rongqiu said China will facilitate the implementation of the UN Biodiversity Deal adopted at the just concluded COP15. Through the framework, we can see the unity and cooperation among the parties as we work together to reverse the trend of biodiversity loss. Through the framework, we can see the ambition and action of the parties as we join hands to build a community of life on Earth. Through the framework, we see hope and future as we secure a clean and beautiful world for the future generations. Known as the 15th meeting of the Conference of the Parties to the UN Convention on Biological Diversity, COP15 was wrapped up after nearly two weeks of negotiation with the adoption of Kunmin Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework aimed at reversing biodiversity loss. Huang told a press conference China will actively guide the implementation of the goals and targets in the framework and ensure the relevant decisions are fully implemented. China will continue to provide support to the developing countries within its capacity, said Huang, noting that China is the largest contributor to the Global Environment Facility funding mechanism of the Convention on Biological Diversity among developing countries. Apart from the funding support, China has also provided technical support and training for other developing countries in the field of biodiversity protection under the South-South Cooperation Framework. Chinese government rolls out economic stimulus programs to boost consumption and exports. The Chinese government is rolling out a range of measures nationwide to boost consumption and support the growth of export businesses. At one government-supported event in South China's Guangdong province, consumers are being offered subsidies and discounts on taxes and fees for purchasing new cars with more than 100 new vehicles from 60 brands to choose from. Similar support activities are being launched across Guangdong with nearly 80 events targeting consumers, producers and exporters. Government departments in other provinces are launching special promotions for shoppers with Hubei province in central China, issuing coupons worth 200 million yuan for spring festival purchases. The government of Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region, South China is supporting a winter tourism promotion subsidizing 50% discounts at more than 160 cultural and travel companies for buyers of scenic spot tickets. The government also supporting producers and exporters with authorities in Zhejiang, Sichuan and Jiangsu provinces, organizing foreign trade enterprises to travel overseas to win new business. The first delegates from a trade mission organized by the government in Anhui headed to Germany and Vietnam, while delegates from more than 40 companies in Hebei went on a trade mission to Dubai and successfully sealed deals worth around 30 million US dollars. Japan is really against government's intention of military expanding. Hundreds of Japanese residents protested in Tokyo against government's intention to increase defense spending and strengthen the so-called counterattack capability. Protesters held banners with slogans showing their protest against the expansion of government forces and against constitutional amendment and wars. The Japanese government will make a final decision on the revision of the document at the cabinet meeting. As adults, we have the responsibility to make efforts for our younger generations and stop military expansion as soon as possible. According to local media in Japan, the so-called counter-attack capability may bring more uncertainties to regional situation. China and Russia hold the naval exercise to demonstrate the capability of both sides. Chinese and Russian Navy held the Joint Naval Exercises Joint Sea 2022 in waters east of the sea area from Zhoushan to Taizhou, East China Zhejiang Province, aiming to demonstrate the determination and capability of the two sides to jointly respond to maritime security threats and maintain international and regional peace and stability, and to further deepen China-Russia comprehensive strategic partnership of coordination for a new era. 
the exercise was held in accordance with the annual cooperation plan between the Chinese and Russian militaries. The Chinese Navy held the opening ceremony on the Jinan destroyer, which is its command ship, while the Russian Navy held its opening ceremony on the guided missile cruiser Varyak. After the two sides made speeches, played and sang the national anthems, executive director of the Chinese fleet for the naval exercise Wang Yu announced the start of the exercise. The Russian forces included guided missile cruiser Varyak, anti-submarine ship Marshal Shaposnikov, corvettes Sovresheny and Sovrazitelny and supply ship Pechenga. South Korean president says needs to reform labor in other areas next year. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol said reforming practices in the labor market should be a top priority for his government's drive to improve the way the country works. The conservative Yoon, who took office early this year, has repeatedly said his government will strictly apply the law to labor relations in a country with a long record of fractious industrial relations. At the finance ministry briefing, Yoon said the education system and public pension service were areas in economic strategy needed reform on next years. South Korea's finance minister, Cho Kyung Ho, said the country's economy would see growth slowing to 1.6% in 2023 from an estimated 2.5% this year, more pessimistic than the central bank's forecast made in November for 1.7% growth. The lower growth forecast reflected the worsening global economic outlook. Well, thank you very much, everyone. On behalf of our team, I would like to wish everyone a very happy and joyous Christmas celebration. See you.